Okay, we'd like to begin our study of the United States by looking at three distinct civilizations that came together in the very beginning of the history of this region, of this area that we call the United States. Uh, those civilizations came from different parts of the world, the Native Americans who were, who were here originally, the Europeans, and, and then the Africans. It's these civilizations coming together that form the unique society, the unique culture that today we call the United States. We'd like to examine that of the Native Americans first. We believe the leading theory currently is that the Native Americans arrived here from Asia during the last Ice Age. And they actually walked here, we think, over a land bridge in what, what some people have termed Beringia. It's an area around today's the modern Bering Strait. We think that that area was actually above, above sea level during the last Ice Age, and that allowed for people to literally walk from Asia to North America. We believe that once they got here, they went ahead and migrated throughout the Americas and to North America, modern day Central America, and South America. Some of the civilizations that those immigrants founded included the Mayans down in Mexico and Guatemala, the Incans along the western shores of South America, the Aztecs in Central Mexico, modern day Central Mexico, the Olmecs. Uh, in North America, you have the Anasazi and the Hopewell as well as tribal groups. Uh, the tribal groups that were dominant at the time of the arrival of the Europeans included the Pueblo in the southwestern United States, the Iroquois in the Midwest and the Northeast, uh, the Cherokee, Cherokee in the Southeast, and then the Crow in the Great Plains, and the Apache also in the, uh, in the Southwest and in the West. Uh, these were some of the more prominent tribal groups of Native Americans in North America. The life of the Native Americans varied greatly from place to place, but for the most part, we think that most of them operated on a barter system. We really don't find evidence that they had money to trade, uh, so we believe that they, they traded goods. The trade routes we knew were pretty extensive. We know that trade routes uh, from the Aztecs went as far north as Texas or maybe even Oklahoma from artifacts that we found. We know that the Mayans had ocean-going canoes and, and they could travel throughout the Caribbean. And so we believe that trade routes were used extensively. Of course. The Incas had a road network that stretched almost the entire length of South America. One of the ways that Native American life was, was somewhat different than the life we understand, however, was in land use. The Native Americans didn't have a concept of private land ownership. They did not believe land could be bought or sold, at least for the most part. In the case of the Incas, the emperor owned all the land. and In the case of a lot of the tribal groups in North America, they believed that the land was owned by the group. And so this concept that one person could, could buy and sell land to another person was very foreign to them. And that really is the root of a lot of the problems between the European civilization and the Native American civilization uh, when they first encounter one another. The religion of the Native Americans generally considered things like ancestor worship. Most Native American groups had this idea of a great spirit or a single supreme being or force that, that governed the universe. They believed spirits occupied the natural world, but the bottom line is that from civilization to civilization, from group to group, the religious beliefs could vary greatly. There wasn't really an organized system where they had a book or a priesthood that they, they kept a uniform system of beliefs throughout Native American cultures. The family also greatly, uh, varied greatly from location to location. And hunter-gatherer societies as those on the Great Plains, uh, the, the nuclear family was predominant. When you move further south and you get into some of the larger civilizations that were more maybe agrarian, uh, you find uh, extended families becoming more prevalent, certainly uh, in places uh, like the Northeast and the Midwest. Uh, a lot of those tribal groups focus more on extended families. So again, family life was, was different from place to place. The African civilizations at the time of the arrival of the Europeans included civilizations like the Songhai. The Songhai had an advanced center of learning in a town called Timbuktu. Some of their more significant rulers include rulers like Sunni Ali and Askia Muhammad. Uh, as their names might imply or might suggest, they were Muslim. Uh, and in fact, a lot of the, the people, a lot of the, um, uh, the, the people of the Songhai were in fact uh, Muslim. They were followers of Islam. The civilization of Benin developed in the rainforest down by the Niger River Delta. It's actually one of the few uh, civilizations historically that, that develops in a rainforest. It's, uh, there's a certain set of unique challenges to that. Their, their rulers were known as Obas. That's kind of like a king. Oba was the title of that. Their most successful Oba was a gentleman by the name of Iwari, and he brings the civilization of Benin to its highest point. The Congo civilization was located, as the name again would imply, along the Co uh, Congo River in West Central Africa. And in fact, a lot of these civilizations that encountered the Europeans are along the western coast of Africa. 
But by far and away, the most significant thing that that defines the relationship between the Europeans and the Americas and the Africans was the slave trade. The Africans were not willing immigrants to the United States uh, or to, to North America or South America. Rather, they were brought over by the slave trade, which brings us to the Europeans. The European expansion to North America, the story really begins way back uh, in 622. Uh, again, you're talking about 800 years prior to the arrival of the Europeans in, in the Americas. In 622, Islam begins to expand and grow out of the Arabian Peninsula, and they push against Europe. And in a very short period of time, in that about 120 years, they expand from the Indus River in the east to the Iberian Peninsula, or modern-day Spain in the west. And this doesn't stop until the Spanish stand up and, and they go through what's called the Reconquista, where they go ahead and take the Iberian Peninsula back from the Muslims. Other than rulers in Europe, attempt to take land back from the Muslims. And the most famous incident of this is probably known as the Crusades, called for by Pope Urban II. He calls for the, the Europeans to reconquer the Holy Lands, and the result is an increased European desire for foreign goods, particularly goods from the Middle East. And this increases European wealth as that trade grows. It leads to things like the Reformation, a religious movement in Europe, where Martin Luther uh, nails his 95 Thesis on the, on the church door and questions the authority of the Catholic Church. The Renaissance, which was an intellectual movement in, and especially in Italy and the rebirth of learning in Europe and all this leads to the country of Portugal. The country of Portugal in particular Prince Henry the Navigator sees all this going on and says you know rather than go to the Middle East to get all these goods why don't we go to the source and let's find a cheaper way to get to India which was the source of a lot of these goods that the Europeans really liked and so he begins along with his sailors to explore the western coast of Africa and begins making maps it's the Portuguese who first discover a thriving slave trade in Western Africa, and they buy the slaves from Africans. The Africans were selling other Africans into slavery, and this is really the beginning of the plantation system that comes to dominate life in not only South America and Central America, but also in what today is the United States. All of this, uh, all of this goes ahead and comes together uh, when Christopher Columbus, an Italian explorer, who sailed for Spain, discovers the New World. He's generally the European given credit for discovering the Americas. A lot of people say, well, he didn't really discover them. The Vikings were here first. Well, we do think the Vikings were here first. There's evidence of it up in Canada. But the Vikings didn't stay. It's Christopher Columbus who arrives in the New World, and from then on, the Europeans have a lasting presence in this New World.